today we are going to be helping out-of-state investors invest in real estate in cheap markets that have the cash flow that you guys are looking for, right? They have a saying. I don't remember who made up the saying, so I'm just going to say I made it up, even though I didn't make up this saying. But they say, or I say, live where you want, invest where it makes sense. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today for one of my investor clients. Let's jump into it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. This is the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I am your host, James Wise, and I work for you, scouring the market, looking for the cash flow deals that make sense. Today, specifically, I'm working my dog, Mike, investor from Oregon. Mike, me and you are building a portfolio of cash flowing rental properties, low cost, high cash flow properties in the Cleveland, Ohio market. You're in Oregon. I'm not sure exactly which part of Oregon, uh, but like pretty much all of it's like socialist, communist, USSR rides. It fucking sucks out there, right? Now, every time I do a video where one of my clients is from Oregon, which actually happens quite frequently, right? Because, uh, well, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's freaking can't communism over there Commun communism it's freaking marxism attacking property owners in oregon right so i do a lot uh, of videos where i have clients from oregon right very popular uh, holton wise is very popular with folks living in oregon right uh investors who are looking for lower cost properties because the housing prices out there are just through the freaking roof and also it's like impossible uh to actually run a rental property portfolio out there, right? Because the government has essentially stripped you of all your property rights. So we get a lot of dudes and gals from Oregon who want to invest in uh, red areas that have better pricing, higher returns, right? You want to live there because apparently uh, outside of all the communism, it's like a really cool place to live. I don't know. I've never been there. Uh, but yeah, that's great. You want to live there? Cool. I'm not advocating anybody move, right? But let's invest where it makes sense, right? So because of that, again, have a lot of a lot of investors from Oregon who work with us, and every time I make one of these videos, uh, for whatever reason, a bunch of other Oregonians, whatever the fuck y'all call yourselves, uh, just like attack me uh, because I pronounce Oregon wrong. Well, uh, I'm here to say, fuck you. I'm not going to change how I pronounce it. That's just how I fucking say it, bro. I am sorry. I don't know if it's like my Cleveland, Ohio uh, accent. I'm not sure. That's the way I say it. I don't know. Sometimes I'm driving and my friggin' GPS says some streets. Starting route to Painesville. And I'm like, bitch, that is not how I pronounce it. You are pronouncing it wrong. And I get mad. But you know what? That's how my GPS says it. So that's just how it's going to be, folks. My GPS says it one way. I say Oregon another way. We're just going to have to deal with that, right? But you know what this show is not about? This show is not about how I or my P, uh, GPS pronounce things. This show is about my man Mike, Oregon investor, who's trying to build up a cash-flowing rental property portfolio. Right, Mike Nino, we got two under contract. Got some more for you, man. I think you're really going to dig this one. I like this deal quite a bit. So, folks, if you're watching Mike's show right now, this property that I'm about to go over with Mike, it's not available for you. I already sent him this video uh, probably months ago privately, and then later when the deals are no longer available, publish them publicly on Holton Wise TV so we could all learn. And if you guys want to work with me and my team in the same way Mike has done, in the notes below, you'll see a link to do so. There's also our email address. Shoot us your phone number. My team will hop on the phone with you, talk to you about working together, so you can get a customized video just like this one, Mike. So now, without further ado, let's go over the details of this property because I think you're going to love it, bro, and it's going to fit right in line with the other properties that you and I have been focusing on. <laughs> Please. I think it's too big. No, I think it'll 
Welcome back, folks. Let's get into this property. I friggin' love this property, uh, like, a lot. Like, there's a lot of things about this house, uh, this duplex, that I really, really like. Now, for people that watch my show uh, frequently, who've been watching Holton Wise TV for quite some time, you'll know that I'm not one of those guys, I'm not one of those brokers It's like, oh, this property's so awesome! It's so awesome! It's so great! I hate that shit, right? You get... You know, some fucking beat up ghetto fucking shit box house. And then you read the listing description and like the listing agents like this charming little bungalow. Like, bro, this house looks like fucking shit. All right. Let's like talk about what we're actually trying to buy. Right. You can make a lot of money buying shitty houses. Right. So if a house is a little shitty house, let's just acknowledge that it's a shitty house. Right. And that's how I've always done things. Right. That's how I sell properties. I, I, I sell you on. Like, reality. I'm not going to try to fluff you and be like, oh, this thing looks great, when clearly we're all looking at it like, dude, that thing sucks, right? So, I don't often be like, man, I love this house, I love this house. I try to give you guys an objective viewpoint, right? Because you're trying to make an investment decision, right? There's nothing perfect. The good, you got to take the good with the bad, man. With that said, though, I do really, really like this house because there are several things going on with this house that are out of the norm of what we get in the Cleveland market, right? The first is going to be the location, 1612 Maple Drive, Lorain, Ohio, okay? Just hit the market two days ago, priced at $104,900. This is the house. Let me pull up that picture. I love the fact that it's in Lorain. Lorain is one of my hot spots right now, okay? We deal with a lot of outer state investors. Everybody's coming to the Cleveland market. Cleveland, 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 because they, they Google things, they hear things, nationwide publications. Like, I know I've been interviewed by Realtor.com, like, multiple times, right? By the way, if you ever want to see uh, any of the places that Holton Wise or that I've appeared in the news or been interviewed by news publications or anything like that, obviously you can Google it, uh, but we do track that stuff for you guys. It's on the press page of HoltonWise.com. But anyway, I I've been interviewed by, you know, Realtor.com multiple times, and, like, it just feels like they're always like, what are the 10 best cash flow markets? Stuff like that, right? I'm sure you guys have all seen those types of articles, right? Well, Cleveland is always up there, right? Because of that, we get a lot of people from out of town, right? A lot of people from out of town coming to the Cleveland market, but they're only looking, they're like laser focused on Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. They forget that Cleveland is just one city in the greater metropolitan area. And a city that is overlooked all the friggin' time is Lorraine. I think Lorraine right now, a lot of the like C grade stuff we do in Cleveland, I think objectively you get a better base of tenants out there in Lorraine. I think you get a nicer housing stock in Lorraine, and the best part is it's typically cheaper than Cleveland. And the whole goddamn cherry on the top of that song, bitch, is the fact that the city itself of Lorraine more landlord friendly than the city of Cleveland itself, right? So because of that, one of the main things I really dig about this house is the fact that it's in Lorraine. The second thing I dig about this house is the layout, folks. This is a side-by-side, -side, okay? It feels like two single-family homes. In the Cleveland market, we have a lot of duplexes, but like 99.9% .9 of them are going to be the up-down, right? So like tenant one would be here, tenant two is living above them, right? That causes problems, that causes friction, right? They fight, okay? And that leads to higher turnovers. Turnovers hurt you as investors, right? So the fact that this is a side-by-side, -side, whenever you get the opportunity to buy a side-by-side -side duplex, you should take it because there's not very many of them, right? And if you're going to get a duplex, it's the best kind of duplex. And then lastly, uh, <clears throat> one last thing I'm going to say before we go through all the pictures to tell you what we got to do to this is another thing that stands out uh, is the year built, right? Right there, highlighted, right there, 19 57 okay we have a lot of housing stock in the cleveland market that's like turn of the century 1910 1920 you know that kind of stuff right even a couple houses that are like before 1900 right so like late 1800s early 1900s right so 57 is actually pretty new housing stock for us right so that that's great <clears throat> that's awesome for us right we don't have incredibly old stuff right probably not dealing with knob and two boy or things of that nature right so that's nice okay now as far as the property 1049 is what they're asking. We got to offer them 1049. This is an awesome house. We got to do a little work though, right? Because one of the units looks like this. The other one's already got a tenant, uh, so we don't got to worry about that. But this is a little dated, okay? This looks like, you know, it's coming out of the 50s or the 70s, right? We got to update this, right? But nothing major. Just some cosmetics, man. Just some cosmetics, right? We can't have the 
you know, super dated, like, wood toilet seat. That's not going to work. This vanity, that's not going to work. No tenants are excited about that. No tenants are excited about this, right? Home Depot, Lowe's quality stuff is all we need to do. Just cosmetically fix this bad boy up. Good-looking mechanicals. That furnace and hot water tank look to be newer. Looks like a great little nice little area, man. Super side-by-side -side layout, vinyl-sided. The roof appears to be in pretty darn good shape. This is sweet, right? So we offer 104 dollars because that's what they're asking because we need to take this sucker down. Throw in $15,000, a cosmetic reno. Our all-in investment is one hundred nineteen nine. dollars As far as rents go, currently one tenant's paying seven fifty. dollars Of course, we've seen the outdated vacant unit, but in reality, these are $850 uh, rental units, right? So the one that's already in there, we'll try to slowly work them up, right? But that extra 100 bucks, that's not really, you know, making or breaking anything, right? The fact that we don't have to turn that unit over because that one's probably dated too is what really matters. So eventually we'll get them up to 850, right? Then we're bringing in 17 hundo, 20,400 for the year. Of course, folks, I'm objective, so I know you ain't I'm going to tell you you're going to keep that 20400 because you ain't. Because sometimes people don't pay. Sometimes we evict people. you got to pay cap expenditures. you got to pay taxes. you got to pay all the stuff, right? There's a lot of costs that come with managing a rental property portfolio. You see them right there on the chart for you. That is with my team doing the management for you, right? So you're completely passive in this. This is what it should look like. Of that $20,400 you are supposed to make, in reality... Your true profit is going to be around ten thousand four hundred forty for the year, right? Now, with our hundred twenty thousand dollars investment, right, hundred nineteen nine, you're putting out of your pocket forty one two and a quarter, right? Because you're going to need to spend your down payment money plus I'm factoring in that fifteen thousand dollars, right? Because I'm not going to get you eight fifty. Uh, you know, with the house looking dated like that, right? You try to offer a dated house like that, could we rent it like that? Yeah, probably, but you know what we're going to rent it to? Some tenant that can't live anywhere else, right? So it's going to be like a below average tenant, right? A tenant who's only living there because they can't get another house, right? You want to give them a reason to want to stay, right? Because you get a tenant that lives in your house for five years, you're making more money than if during that same five years you get three tenants, right? Turnovers kill you, right? So, after the reno, after the down payment, you're out of pocket 42 and a quarter. Banks kicking in 78. That, folks, is a 16% cash on cash return, a nine cap, and you're in a very nice landlord friendly area with what I consider to be a premium asset when we're comparing it to other multifamily low cost assets. This deal is a banger, which is why we need to go in full price. Don't pussyfoot around. Don't be like, James! Don't think we can get it for 80. No, we can't get it for 80. James, do you think we can get it for 90? No, I don't think we can get it for 90. I think we need to pay 104 9 I comprehend that, you know, you'd like to get it for 90, but I don't believe that will happen. If you'd like me to, to write up an offer at 90, I can do so, but you're probably not going to get the deal. My opinion is we got to come in full price because this is one hell of an asset and we want to take this down for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.